falling apart. I messed everything up, I don't know what to do. Is Rory Gilmore actually as unlikable as people say she is? I just finished watching Gilmore Girls for the first time. I don't know how I'd never seen it before. I didn't realize that people disliked Rory. It just got me thinking, are we being too harsh on her considering she's a teenager when the show starts or are these criticisms valid? Is Rory's downfall due to bad writing or is it actually well done and realistic? These are all things I want to look at today. I may have some opinions that surprise you. Now, I am going to do a Gilmore Girls deep dive analysis that is coming, I promise. What happened to Rory? What made her like this? If you take a look at season one, Rory is like a completely different person to how she is by the end of the show. She is very innocent, she's obviously still young, she's very much focused on her work. She is really well behaved, she's basically the symbol of the perfect daughter. She doesn't talk back to her mom. they have some little arguments that are resolved very quickly and overall she has a great respect for school, for working hard, she has an incredible work ethic that I admire and she just seems like an innocent kid. Some some people still didn't like Rory in season one because they thought that she was just too boring and timid and I appreciate that but at the same time I just wasn't in the headspace of judging her because she's literally a child and Rory obviously has been privileged she gets takeaway food all the time she's a single child so she gets a lot of devoted attention from her mother she never had to share with siblings listen we are very sleepy this morning so would you happen to have something in a larger size say a mug a terrine a small bowl of some kind there were some financial struggles there for Lorelai. She was concerned about paying for Rory's school, you know, and so Rory has witnessed her mum as this very strong female figure. But they do have, it's important to note, more of a best friend dynamic than a mother-daughter dynamic, which definitely plays into things later on in the show when Rory doesn't quite respect her mother as she should perhaps but then Rory meets her grandparents and they're completely different they have this really fabulous fancy lifestyle with all these rich socialites and these parties and Lorelai is almost forced into having this relationship with her parents who she's never liked and so Rory suddenly gets to properly meet her grandparents for the first time and Rory is okay for her grandparents to dress her up in a fancy tiara or to do a whole painting of her and she understands that even though it's a little strange if she goes along with it it will make her grandparents happy and that just shows how much of a giving and sweet person Rory is in season one because even though she doesn't get it personally she understands that it makes her grandparents happy when she tries to fit in with them and she also doesn't talk back to them much. Rory for the most part though tends to stay out of it and avoid the conflict. I can only think of one instance where she actually got mad at them about something um, but for the most part she's very forgiving and I don't think that she saw them in the same way Lorelai saw them. Rory was like I want to spend time with my grandpa and I don't think fully acknowledged how badly they treated her mother. She just didn't see it because they were nice to her so she had a different experience of interacting with them. I'm trying to understand the moment Rory went wrong, the moment that things changed for her and I genuinely think it happens in the pilot episode just from Rory getting to know her grandparents and having that influence in Rory's life isn't necessarily a good thing. I don't think they were a positive influence on her in the pilot episode they're like don't worry we'll pay for children so she's like great I didn't even need to work for it I didn't need to prove myself to them they just like me they want to pay for me who needs to work hard if she makes a mistake she always has that safety net there and that financial support from her grandparents and she is very privileged most people don't have that to fall back on Rory does who are you sit down I am her grandfather Richard Gilmore and this is outrageous you are going to have to restrain yourself sir I will not restrain myself I will not stand by and let this girl walk around with a record for five years. The grandparents are always praising Rory. They're acting like she's the best at everything. And that's not necessarily true, but as the show unfolds, you see how they just really mollycoddle her. For instance, in the later seasons, maybe season three, Paris and Rory don't win this school competition they worked super hard on. And Richard is just furious. He storms into the school like, where's the headmaster? I need to speak to him. My precious Rory does deserves to win this award and he just thinks that he can buy his way into everything. People like to blame Lorelai and say oh she was too giving a parent, she was too 
generous, but overall I'd say 90% of the time Lorelai was actually a really solid parent who was really loving and wanted Rory to work hard and did discipline her. I genuinely think it was that influence there from the grandparents. I mean, I know Rory was only seeing them like once a week for Friday night dinners, but whenever there was a problem, they would just step in for her. And another part of that is the community Rory grew up in of Stars Hollow, where not only is she an only child, but everyone in the community just adores her and praises whatever she does. She's like the golden child of the town. Rory at the tender age of 16 already has these cute guys just appearing everywhere, telling her how much they like her. I'd say in season seasons one to two she has like one two she has like three different love interests she has Dean and then she has Tristan all competing for her attention or saying that they liked her and she never had to try to find these men they just appeared like she met Jess through Luke and then Dean was just this guy that was obsessed with her watching her from afar at school and thought she was intriguing for no understandable reason <laughs> and then Tristan who's like the bad boy at school ends up forming these genuine feelings for Rory that he doesn't seem to have for any other girl. She's living in this small town. It's not like she's living in a big city. And to be honest, she doesn't even leave the house that much or do that much networking. So the fact that these guys are just there is quite incredible, especially considering how young she is. She's not even at uni yet. And she's having all these dating experiences. Now, when Dean comes along, Rory is interested in him, but not in a weird way. I'd say it was a very sweet, mutually respectful relationship at first. There wasn't a problem there. Dean didn't make Rory worse or anything like that. I just think they were interested in that young love type of way. Same with Tristan. Rory just felt like he was unreliable and a bit of an idiot and so she wasn't that interested and it didn't help that him bullying her was his way of flirting with her. I feel like if he just talked to her in a normal way that would have made it easier but his silly immature behavior was not very attractive to her. If you're Jess arrives in season two. And that again was a tipping point for Rory, not in a good way, where you could see her character take a turn. And I would say that season two is when I stopped liking Rory. It was very early on. And I already just started to go off her. My problem was when she started to have these romantic feelings for him and she didn't know how to handle it because she was with Dean at the time and she's still so young, she's figuring stuff out. And she wasn't very good at just letting go of her relationship with Dean and moving on. So she was kind of stringing both guys along at points and couldn't seem to make a solid decision. Like she'd flirt with Jess, but then couldn't let go of Dean. Rory's trying to befriend him, but no one else likes him, which I think isolates her further from other people. And also the fact that Lorelai really disliked Jess made it worse. It made Rory feel like, well, I can't talk to my mum about important things anymore because if I tell her that I see the good in Jess, she'll think I'm crazy. I'm just not very comfortable with him, Rory. Well, try and get comfortable. Well, I don't know if I can. But you said. I know what I said, but I can't help it. <sighs> How many times do I have to tell you? That I don't know the real Jess? You don't. Well, fine. I don't know him, but I'm not too fond of his stand-in. People are different once you get to know them. And because Lorelai was so judgmental towards Jess, Rory started to hide things from her. So she started maybe skipping school to hang out with Jess, hanging out with him behind Dean's back, not telling Dean, even though she knew it would upset Dean because he was quite territorial. The point where I was like, what is going on with Rory is when she missed her mum's graduation ceremony because she was busy hanging out with Jess when she shouldn't have been. And that was so selfish and it showed that she was starting to lose sight of her priorities for a boy someone what made it even worse and I was I was quite shocked was when Rory just goes behind Dean's back again and she kisses Jess now this is forgivable because she's what 16 17 she's still so young so I'll let it slide then in season three Rory had obviously kissed Jess but she still hadn't made the move to end things with Dean so she's there obsessing over Jess and then getting annoyed when he's trying to move on from her trying to date someone else then she gets really defensive when her mum brings it up and tries to challenge her about it but it's like he doesn't owe you anything, girl, and you're not together. He's still there. What? Jess, he's still there. I can't believe he's still there. Just ignore him. You're not supposed to come and sit and watch. You're supposed to dance. He's just trying to bug me, sitting there right in front of me, staring. Jerk. I mean, girls like Shane, what is it with them? 
Don't they see what they look like? I know they have mirrors. I'm gonna sit here as long as I like and I'm gonna do whatever I like. And if you don't like it, then just ignore me and pay attention to your boyfriend. The only reason things ended with Dean is because he broke up with her. And I thought that was so silly that he had to be the one to end things. Like I felt bad for Dean at that point, you know, because he was being kind of disrespected and everyone knew it, but Rory just wasn't acknowledging it. You know, I tried to ignore this. <laughs> I really did, but I don't know what the hell I was thinking. What are you talking about? You don't want to be with me, Rory. Yes, I do. Oh, please. You've been into him since he got to town. And I've spent weeks, months actually, trying to convince myself that it wasn't true, that everything was fine between us. Again, although I didn't like Rory at this point, I kept giving her chances because I was like, she's a kid. She's too young to be having these relationships. She has no idea what she's doing. And this will hopefully be a learning experience for her. And despite these issues, Rory is still somewhat a grateful and down to earth person. For instance, she goes to graduate from Chilton to go off to college and she does this really beautiful speech that literally brought me to tears where she says that her mum is her hero, her biggest role model and she thanks her mum for pushing her for being her best friend. It was just so sweet. I love that scene so much. She's working really hard, reading a lot of books but she's not really getting tailored advice on how to get into the colleges like Yale or Harvard. Rory seems to be under the impression that if she works hard then she'll be rewarded but what I don't think she's understanding, the missing puzzle piece there is that there are plenty of kids who are smart who can write an essay you know that doesn't make her a unique candidate and it's a very competitive environment you need to stand out but she seemed to just think that by getting her homework done that somehow that meant she'd get into Yale or Harvard and Paris was a go-getter and she would push Rory and Paris was like well you need to do extracurricular activities how are you going to stand out I don't think Rory really had what it took Rory reads in her spare time mostly classic books and academic books and she only wants to attend these elite prestigious private schools or prestigious unis like Chilton, then Harvard, then Yale. So again, being smart, succeeding in life looks a certain way. Not everyone has the privilege to afford what Rory is doing. And her goal of getting into Harvard and Yale is amazing. Of course, it would look great in her CV, but not everyone has the privilege to be able to do that. Rory goes to her grandparents directly without her mum's involvement and she asks if they can pay her Yale tuition fees for four years. I thought it was interesting that she didn't properly consult her mum about this first. That to me was again another turning point where Rory is shifting away from communicating with her mum and she has a private separate relationship and communication with her grandparents that Lorelai has no part in. Not necessarily a good thing because in my opinion Richard and Emily are very toxic. You were just being stubborn. Go to bed. Well you didn't want to ask for help so I did. Hey do you remember the conversation we had before we left this house tonight? Yes but... I told you going to my parents was not an option. I know but... In fact I told you several times that asking my parents was not an option, but I still think I made my point pretty damn clear. Fine, but we have a real problem here. Because Rory came to them like, guys, I'm gonna work so hard at school and I am gonna pay you back every penny. And they're like, no, no, like, don't worry about it. They just want to give it to her freely. And they say they're happy to pay for it if she does a master's. All you have to do is come and name. In season four, Rory's um, going to college, She's meeting people and I was happy because she was working hard. She was almost putting too much on her plate in fact, which again shows me that Rory does pressurize herself a lot to be perfect. I really liked season four in the sense that for once dating doesn't go smoothly for Rory. For once men just aren't turning up on her doorstep. Like she tries talking to one guy and he was just kind of douchey and wanted to hook up. Then she tries asking out a guy in the laundry room and he just is like, no. She's literally like, do you want to grab coffee sometime? And he's like, no thanks. That was it. Like It's so funny. And they never explain why he said no. He just wasn't interested. And I loved that. That's so realistic. So she has to deal with these rejections. But then Rory starts forming this friendship again with Dean in season four, which I thought was really sweet that despite their arguments, despite all this conflict that they could find a way to be friends. And Dean at this point is actually married to someone else. He really rushed it. But I was happy that he and Rory could just get along and be in each other's lives. But then I did start finding it a bit weird because I it felt like he was hiding it from his wife. And I was like, okay. Hey, Rory. Uh, it's me. Hi. Um, Dean. Hold on a sec. Mom, I have to call you back. You did not spend spring break with Bill Moyers. Bye. I think in like the finale, Rory and Dean kiss and then they sleep together. She loses her virginity to him. It was the fact that he was still married 
she knew that, he knew that. But this is the point where I think people are genuinely too harsh on Rory because people were making out that she was like this home wrecker who stole him from Lindsay and manipulated him and all this. But Rory is very much being manipulated by Dean. Now it was wrong for Rory to sleep with him. It was very stupid. But Dean was like totally misleading her about the situation with Lindsay. He was making out that things weren't working out between them, that he just wanted to be with Rory, which was so not the case. Like Lindsay at the time was so devoted to Dean. So that's where I think Rory was deceived by him. But still, she shouldn't have done it. And what made it horrible is that Lorelai came home right after it happened as Dean was leaving and she knew what had happened so Rory couldn't even hide it. And Rory tries to justify it by saying, well, aren't you happy my first time happened with someone who really cares about me and loves me with my Dean? He's not your Dean. He's Lindsay's Dean. This was so stupid of you. Like you don't know if what he's saying is true, but Rory feels this sense of ownership over Dean because she dated him first and he was her boyfriend first. She literally is like, he's my Dean and I dated him first and then blames Lindsay for being a bad wife and working him to death and saying Lindsay's not good for him. And I was like, wow, this girl has so much internalized misogyny. It's crazy. Oh, also there's a video from The Take, which was really good, I'd recommend it. But they said that Rory cuts her hair to a bob. Her mom's like, what happened? And it's funny because that's when Rory is trying for a fresh start when she's at uni and it shows that she's trying to move on from Jess and maybe having new feelings for Dean and symbolized by the fact that she goes for such a drastic hair change and also her haircut is the exact same as Dean's fiance Lindsay which shows how subconsciously she's competing with Lindsay and seeing her as a rival and I was like oh my god that is such a cool point I didn't even notice it I couldn't really understand why this was happening because Rory is not a school kid anymore more. She's at uni. Then what again probably made it a bit worse was she starts dating Logan in season five and he's basically right out of her grandparents world. He's rich, he's privileged, he's smart so he doesn't take life too seriously because he knows that things will just work out for him and again as much as I adore these two together as I said in my video about them their perfection you could see that Rory just wasn't identifying with that old down-to-earth side of herself anymore and she's more becoming like her grandmother Emily and she makes friends with this guy Marty who is way less rich and the kind of guy that Rory definitely would have been interested in because he reminds me a bit of Dean but she's just not interested in him and it's funny because Logan and his friends in particular are very rude and classist towards Marty make fun of him for being a waiter and Rory stands up for him once but then the next time it happens she just doesn't stand up for him properly which I thought was interesting it's like she just didn't have it in her and what's also fascinating to me is that Rory rejects Marty he has such a crush on her and she just doesn't feel it and she's like sorry I like Logan and that to me was so symbolic that Rory is rejecting the part of herself that would go for a guy like Marty and I couldn't help but wonder if he had more money whether maybe she would have felt more attracted to him but she just doesn't feel it. Then Rory does this internship for journalism and she's always wanted to be a journalist right since she was young. It's very much been her goal and so she's honestly learning so much. This internship, everyone likes her. This was the right direction for her to take something social and collaborative. Um, she's enthusiastic, she's trying to be helpful, getting people their coffee. I was just so proud of her and I felt like getting involved in any way you can with these sorts of things, these internships, meeting people is such a great thing to do even if you have no idea what job you want. Just getting involved. Logan's dad pulls her aside and he's the one that kind of owns this company and he says that she's very nice to work with but she just doesn't have what it takes to be a journalist. She asks permission too often. Let's be real his feedback was very shallow and it wasn't constructive feedback it was just you can't do this. Rory didn't need to take it to heart. It's not always good enough to do just what's asked of you. But I thought I was in a really good rhythm with everyone here. I'm not saying you're not competent, you're smart, you're terrific at anticipating needs. Actually, you'd make a great assistant. Oh. I'm sorry. It's not my pleasure to disappoint someone like you. Especially you. What with the extenuating circumstances. He was saying she's not speaking out enough, she's not getting involved enough, she's not putting herself out there. He was also being really, I think, sexist and ignoring that maybe a really young 20-year-old woman like Rory in a male-dominated workplace would feel uncomfortable putting up her hand and constantly contributing because she'd probably worry about being judged and people not including her or listening to her like as a woman. Regardless of what way you looked at it, you could see that it really hurt Rory's feelings big time and she totally internalizes his feedback and is like I'm not meant to be a journalist, I'm not good enough. And that unfortunately made me think he was right and she is fragile. I mean maybe her 
her being a writer or a journalist wouldn't have worked out because she's so vulnerable. So maybe she would have been better at a social job like being a manager or an event organizer perhaps, a consultant, a secretary. Like honestly, maybe he had a point because she is she just has no grit and this again was a huge turning point afterwards she's at this party and she's being super rude and snappy to logan but not explaining to him what's wrong and then she's like screw it let's just be impulsive and steal a boat <laughs> let's just steal a boat which there's no excuse stealing a boat do you know how entitled that is that's someone's property she had to go to court over it and then had to do community service it's like she was shocked that she was in trouble and i was like you fucking idiot but no one holds her accountable she just thinks she can get away with stuff and that there won't be consequences in the real world. Everyone praises her for doing absolutely nothing. Lorelai fully blames Logan and says he's been a bad influence on Rory and this is all Logan's fault. And I was like, how is that all Logan's fault? It was 50-50. Like, she's a grown adult. I just, I hate how Lorelai does that. She just has this image in her head of Rory as this perfect angel child. And that basically teaches Rory that she'll get away with murder because it's never her fault. I mean, my my daughter never gets into trouble, except, you know, now. But on the whole, the kid is an angel. She goes to Yale. She'll be out in a minute. Right. And then Lorelai later talks to Logan and she's like, you've been such a bad influence on Rory. Like, shut up, Lorelai. Literally shut up. And also Lorelai should have been way more mad about it. But literally the next day, she's cracking jokes about it, like about community service and stuff. Like, it's funny. Years ago, there was basically the same situation where Rory and Jess were going for a drive at night which they shouldn't have been to be honest like it just was a disaster waiting to happen but they did and then I think this animal ran out into the road Jess had a car accident Rory hurt her arm and the entire community of Stars Hollow including Lorelai blame Jess, isolate him, he could have killed Rory. What? And Rory was like, what do you mean? Like, it wasn't his fault, but everyone blames Jess. You had an obligation to this town and to me and to Rory. I have to find out where Jess is. Well, I'll tell you where he's not. He's not in the emergency room having his arm plastered up. Pull back, lady. There aren't hundreds of other boys in the world. You have to go after her husband. Okay, stop attacking my daughter right now. You're upset, I get it, but you do not do this. She slept with my son-in-law. She broke up a marriage. Are you proud? She did not break up a marriage. What do you know of this? Enough. I know Rory. Then, even after stealing that boat, it doesn't help Rory get over her frustration about being a journalist. She decides not to go back to uni or college, but you know what I mean. It's uni in England, but this uni that her grandparents have paid for that will set up her future job so she can work, so she can support herself, so she's not dependent on Logan. She knew her mum would be furious. Her mum was. Her mum was like, I'm not having you move back home with me if you're skipping school. So Rory's like, okay then. And then she runs to her grandparents' cozy house. They will give her a room in their mansion and she can go and stay with them. She knows that no matter what she does, she can always fall back on her grandparents. They're fine with it. They're like, okay, here's this whole studio we'll set up for you, this luxurious suite, so you can chill in the pool. Like no one ever puts their foot down with her. She needs some tough love. That's what she needed and no one was giving it to her. And so Logan's dad is a bully, like Rory knows, like Logan himself has told her. He's mean to everyone, yet Rory takes it so personally. Why are you so willing to believe this guy? Logan agrees with him. He said that? He didn't say it. I could just tell. How? I could tell. He ranted about his father being a jerk and, and speaking his mind, but he never said that he was wrong. Rory, come on. What kind of logic is that? It doesn't matter. And then she gets salty at her mum, and they have this rift in their relationship and don't speak. And Rory's like rolling her eyes every time her mum says something, not calling her, not apologizing. And I, I couldn't stand it. Her mum has been her best friend, her whole life, her biggest ally. And it's the fact that she's still failing to recognize that privilege because then when her grandparents annoy her, she just ends up moving out, which obviously really hurt their feelings because they've taken her in. She didn't even say thank you. She hasn't got a full-time job. She's not earning money. She's just cruising through life. It's pathetic. I'm sorry. If she's really having a crisis about her self-esteem, then I totally understand that. But don't throw away your future. Talk to the mental health counselor. Go talk to a therapist. Talk to your mom. Talk to 
to Paris, try and get some motivation, go to some workshops, maybe do a different degree altogether if you feel like journalism just isn't for you, that's totally cool. But don't just give up on being academic altogether, don't stop learning. And you cannot make such a huge decision based off what one man says you don't even know. Rory as a 20 year old is going through the angsty teenager phase she should have had when she was 14. Then in season 6 Rory is trying to describe what she's lost in this rift with her mum to Logan but she really plays down her closeness with her mum to Logan. She just says she can be pretty cool. What's with the carrots? Oh, I was afraid you weren't eating right at school. Ah. Marshmallow? Thank you. I know most people didn't like the storyline of Rory moving in with Lorelai's parents. I personally loved it because it was something different and I felt like she'd always kind of dismissed how painful Lorelai's childhood was because she hadn't got it but now she got the chance to actually live in Lorelai's shoes and she really didn't like living with Emily and Richard at all. She felt aimless, she felt bored and really controlled by them. They were treating her like she was three and I think that's when she realized oh this is literally a gilded cage and now I understand what Lorelai went through. Previously Rory had a very much rose tinted view of her grandparents and I think I think in season six that's when it was stripped away. In season six she starts working for Emily's like event hosting stuff which I don't really know what the point of that was to be honest the whole thing was just lame her hosting events for these rich people like I don't know what she's getting out of that. Everyone starts applauding for her like oh my gosh Rory did such a great job and Rory's there just beaming soaking up the attention she just loves the attention really and Richard sees and he just his whole face falls he just stares at her looking completely ashamed of who she's become. I'm Rory Gilmore the architect of this event. Thank you. And I'd like to take this moment to thank some others for the outstanding success this evening. He realized that she wasn't even passionate about party planning or event planning, but what she really wanted was the attention and the validation. She had spent the entire episode previously moping around all day, whinging, thinking that she's useless, but then the minute the praise is on her, everyone's clapping, she's up on stage, she just wipes away the tears and forgets that she was even supposed to be sad. And I don't think Richard wanted Rory to end up like Emily, but she's like an Emily in miniature. Eventually Rory starts to come into her own and realize that she does need to graduate, she does need to work hard, that she is going to have a good job one day. But in terms of her romantic relationships that wasn't so good, like the whole thing with Logan was really messy and it was really shitty of her to go and cheat on Logan with Jess. Then she does it and as she's doing it she's like oh wait Jess sorry I realized I still like Logan and want to be with him and I was like why are you messing Jess around then like what are you doing girl she writes this article making fun of rich people and how snobby they are and how obnoxious all their events are and Logan's really upset he's like these people are just like me so you're making fun of me and also these people are just like you so who are you to act like you're so much better than them when you are one of us you are one of these upper class people. And Rory gets so triggered and defensive about this, which I thought was interesting. She doesn't want to acknowledge it. You were making fun of these people all night. I was joking. I wasn't standing there judging everyone. I didn't judge everyone. Wake Dan. up, Rory. Whether you like it or not, you're one of us. <laughs> you went to prep school. You go to Yale. Your grandparents are building a whole damn astronomy building in your name. That is different, okay? It's not like I live off a $5 million trust fund my parents set up for me. She's just a disaster. And then at the end of the show, Logan proposes to her. And even though Rory had literally thought about a future with him, she turns it down because she says the world's wide open to her and she'd be limiting herself by marrying him. And I appreciate that, but I honestly felt like she was more worried about her image and maybe she felt like she had something to prove to everyone. And she was worried about her identity being Logan's wife. But that to me made it seem like she wasn't actually listening to her own heart because surely like she wanted to at least move with him. Like why couldn't she? I don't understand. It was such shitty writing. Why couldn't she have just moved to live with him at least. I just, that whole breakup made no sense because they were soulmates, like as if they would just break up over such a silly thing. But by the Gilmore Girls finale, she does seem to be back on track. She's motivated, she wants to do well in her career and it was a really promising note for her character. It made it seem like despite the messiness, despite the privilege, despite her not knowing what she's doing with dating, she is a strong independent woman who is focused on her career. I love that. Rory's not that bad. People are too harsh on her. She is coming to her own she's still young she's learning she's growing and things will be okay that's what I felt like
However, we need to take into account the revival. If you're out on the road. Because when you factor the revival into it, you realize that Rory is just an asshole. <laughs> it depends what way you look at it. Rory is so unlikable in the revival. And I think the problem is that she's meant to be like 32 and she's still the same child that she was when she was like 15, but worse, she's gone backwards. And when you look at it that way, you're like, no, I just don't like her. For instance, she's back with Logan in the revival. And I felt like that was just a bit weird. Like, why are you back with him? Make a decision. Are you with him? Are you married to him? Are you not? The writers botched their relationship. They're not taking each other seriously, which as if, because the whole point of their arc in the original show was that he took her seriously. So as if he would treat her like this side piece, but whatever. She's got this boyfriend who she doesn't take seriously, who she ignores, who she makes fun of. Oh crap, I forgot about Paul. You're kidding. No, he was at the house this whole time. Didn't you notice his car out front? No, didn't you? Her and Lorelai are still making fun of people who they think are fat. And she's not trying in job interviews. She doesn't prepare for them because she just can't be asked and assumes that things will be handed to her. If I take a chance on Rory Gilmore, what am I getting? What? If I worked here, sell me. Sell. Okay, we're selling. Um, and you basically promised me the job was mine. You were a candidate. What about, we gotta have Rory Gilmore's voice that Sandy says. You've been telling me that for a year. Her general attitude is off. No, I'm not going through a bad stretch. When I hear that someone of your caliber is living here and there, I wonder if I can be of assistance. I appreciate it, but I don't think teaching's my future, but thank you so much. Then she bumps into Dean, her ex-boyfriend in the grocery store, who obviously she never really fought for. But it is the most awkward conversation ever. Like, I got secondhand embarrassment watching it. He's obviously moved on, he's got his own family, and Rory's just there, like, all starry-eyed, reminiscing about their relationship and going, oh, do you remember when we did this? She's just stuck in the past. Like, he's moved on, he's become a man, and she's still this girl. The whole show is meant to be wish fulfillment, it's meant to be positive, it's meant to be this fantasy of things working out. Rory failing is actually very realistic, I do believe. The way that Rory peaked in high school and then was this child prodigy or whatever who fails in later life is realistic to many people. It reflects many people's experiences and it's actually quite depressing. I find it really sad. Like, she had so much potential. Also in the finale, she gets pregnant with what's implied to be Logan's baby, which is so dumb because it implies that he can't commit to her and he'll be this distant guy who's rich who won't be there for the baby and she'll be doing it by herself which come on as if he would not be there for the baby he was devoted like okay whatever but also it implies that she'll always end up turning to jess who'll just be there waiting for her in the background so jess is like her luke the guy that was there all along like as if he's gonna move on he's got a life he has far too many women after him and i don't know why he would still want rory after all these years and it's annoying because not everything needs to be this deep circle of life symbolic cycle of her getting pregnant like her mum did single mum no why can't she be married with kid like why does she have to copy what her mom did i just think that's silly logan loved rory in the finale of season seven he loved her so much he wanted to marry her she tried so hard to make him into a commitment type of guy and he went above and beyond to become that kind of guy why would they not end up together those things those inconsistencies definitely contribute overall to why i just don't like rory's character by the end especially in the revival i do have some points to say in rory's defense why she's not all bad and why people do need to cut her some slack what happens to her is realistic it makes it quite good writing i think everyone makes out that rory's so narcissistic like oh my god she's so selfish she's so out of touch with the real world but can you blame her because from a young age she had these rich grandparents in her life who basically fed everything to her in a silver spoon richard and emily throw her this big party to introduce her to all the richest most eligible bachelors and all these guys are in love with her they all want her how many of us have an experience like that and how could that not go to your head then her grandma took her on an expensive all paid vacation to Europe where they stay in all these expensive hotels. How many 19 year olds have that experience? No one. Also, even when she's at uni, she's still young. It was a bit unfair how everyone in the community said that she was the perfect child and stars hollow and put this pressure on her to be perfect. She's set the bar so high that when she messes up once, the punishment is so much harsher. Rory was forced to grow up too fast. She was being treated like her mom's best friend as opposed to her daughter. She decided really early on in life where she wanted to go for uni, what job she wanted, and that is a lot of pressure to 
to meet those expectations. She made a decision like that before her brain was fully developed, before she'd had certain life experiences, and before she was emotionally ready for certain things. And then she feels this pressure to follow through on a plan that maybe no longer serves her. And like when she met Logan, she wants to be a career woman, but if she married him, she'd need to have a different kind of lifestyle. Nothing wrong with that, but I felt like she was ashamed to say that maybe that was something she wanted because she wanted to have this reputation of being the single successful career woman and maybe being with Logan would have affected her view of herself and her identity. She misses out on a relationship that potentially makes her really happy. I don't think enough people acknowledge that. Rory has a lot of unhealed wounds with her father, a lot of abandonment issues, feeling like he wasn't there for her, he didn't raise her, he didn't want her. He wasn't really present and especially in season three you see how resentful she is towards her father because she felt like he wasn't able to commit to her and not able to commit to Lorelai and she kept just wanting the three of them to be this happy family and it was never working out and then she felt like he kept coming back into Lorelai's life then disappearing then coming back and disappearing just leading to more heartbreak for Lorelai and more instability in the family structure and so often she just wanted him to leave Lorelai alone. I just felt really bad for her. Sometimes Rory would blame her mum then for things going wrong with Christopher or for pushing Christopher away even though what Lorelai was actually doing was setting healthy boundaries with Christopher and respecting herself but Rory read that as you're messing him around or why can't you just be with him because then we can be this family and maybe that is part of the reason as to why Rory pursued Logan because he didn't really want to commit to her at first and I think she thought if I fix him this will be like fixing the relationship I have with my dad. What she really deserves is someone to be a constant in her life. Rory's not the worst but she's not the best either. As the show went on it became increasingly harder to like her. I don't dislike her, I've got no hard feelings but you know she's certainly not my favourite character. I commend the actress who did a great job playing her and really brought a lot of charm to the character but yeah. Please subscribe if you want to see my next Gilmore Girls videos coming up. There's a whole Gilmore Girls playlist I have a link in the description I'll keep adding to as this series progresses. Follow me on Instagram and if you want to know what I'm wearing on my face the link will be in the description and I will see you for the next video. Mwah.